Jim Hodder, also known as Jimmy, was born on December 17, 1947, in Bethpage, New York. He graduated from Plain Edge High School in 1965, then relocated to the Boston area, where he became active in the local music scene. He joined the psychedelic rock group, The Bead Game, which was also known as Bead Game, uh, as I had seen on Discogs, actually. And this band was named after Herman Hesse's novel, The Bead Game. Well, The Glass Bead Game. Jim was the drummer and lead singer of the band. The group built a local following before attracting the attention of Ofco Records and producer Gary Katz. The first album, Baptism, was canceled, actually, but it received a posthumous release in 1996, though it had a limited run. In 1970, the bead game appeared in the film The People Next Door where they performed two songs and soon thereafter recorded the album Easy Riding as part of the Collective Freedom Press. That same year, 1970, the band's only album, Welcome, had been released. Jim sang lead vocals on all the tracks. In 1972, Jim accepted an invitation from Katz and Skunk Baxter to relocate to Los Angeles and join Steely Dan where Katz and Baxter were working with Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. Jim made the move with his girlfriend, Kathy Kamen Goldmark, who had later become a musician herself. Jim barely knew the other band members prior to tracking their first records. Jim acted as Steely Dan's drummer, but was given occasional lead vocals. One source stated that Donald Fagan had insecurities with his singing during this time period, and... So this is why Jim ended up singing the vocals to the song Midnight Cruiser, which is on Steely Dan's first album. This might be true. I'm just a little confused by this fact, because if this was true, why is Donald Fagan the, on the vocals to majority of the songs to Steely Dan's first album? It's kind of strange, but it might still be true. Whatever. Jim can also be heard singing lead vocals on the song Dallas, the A-side of the initial Steely Dan single, and on, of course, Midnight Cruiser from the debut album. Steely Dan soon went on tour in promotion of their releases. Jim also appeared on the band's second album, Countdown to Ecstasy. On November 18, 1973, Jim and Skunk Baxter guest guest plate on a live broadcast by Linda Ronstadt from Sausalito, California. Jim's role was greatly diminished, though, by the time Steely Dan's third album came out, which is titled Pretzel Logic. Jim's role was relegated to backup vocals. According to some sources, Jim only sang on one song, and that was just the backing vocals to that. I don't believe there's any more songs that he sang lead vocals to for the rest of his time in the band. The touring band featured simultaneous drumming from Jim and the well-respected Jeff Picaro, the latter having been a session drummer on the album. This idea for touring made Jim uncomfortable initially, but he later acknowledged the creative potential of the setup. Both him and Skunk Baxter ended up leaving Steely Dan after the tour, as Walter Becker and Donald Fagan decided they didn't want to tour anymore, and they just would rather record music instead. Jim went on, though, to be a session musician. He played drums for Nine on a Ten Scale by Sammy Hagar and Sibling Rivalry by The Rowans. And there's a few more other releases than that, though not that many. He later appeared as the sole drummer on David Soul's album, Playing to an Audience of One, and Rocky Sullivan's album, Caught in the Crossfire. Some of the other releases on Discogs lists Jim as having played as drums on Easy Riding, of course, from the Freedom Express. He was also in a band in the 60s before Steely Dan or anything else that was called The Vandals, though I'm not sure if you can listen to any of their music anywhere. He was also on David Soul's album, 1927 Kansas City, and what seems to be his final release, at least marked on Discogs, is that, of course, he played drums 
end on Caught in the Crossfire, which came out in 1986, though I'm not sure if anything else came out after that or if maybe he had other bands in, after 1986, after this time period. On June 25th, 1990, Jim passed away after drowning in his pool. Mendocino County Sheriff's Lieutenant Jay Miller, who was also the deputy coroner, said that Jim was pronounced dead at 3.25 a.m. at Ukiah Medical Center. He had been on life support from the time that he was found by a friend at the bottom of his pool at his Point Arena home. The hospital measured his blood alcohol level, which was 0.28% which was more than three times the legal limit in California. Lieutenant Miller had stated that Jim was, that Jim had been recently drinking to excess and was taking a prescription of Valium to avert alcohol withdrawal symptoms and another medication for a seizure disorder. I don't know what the seizure disorder was exactly, nor what the medicine was that was for that disorder. Though, of course, mi mixing alcohol with anything, any sort of medicine is always a bad idea. I could not find any obituary or really anything about him in the newspaper archives. There is a find a grave page for Jim and the only connections on it are his mother and father. There's not much else known about his personal life or really just anything in general, I would say. Jim was not buried, but cremated. At the time of his death, he was 42 years old.